One of the most incredible engines ever produced was the J58 by Pratt & Whitney. It's able to achieve Mach 3, and eventually this was incorporated in the SR-71 Blackbird. The engine itself is often overlooked in respect to the aircraft, but the J58 is an engineering phenomenon with the ability to handle massive variations in temperature and pressure at these high speeds. Incoming air is at over 800 degrees, and the engine expands at over 6 inches during flight, so many unique alloys had to be used. It also utilizes directional solidified metal in the turbine, where the crystals are grown in one direction just so that it would hold together at this extreme speed. Furthermore, all the air is kept inside the engine and diverted inside the nacelle. So there's no extra drag created unlike many other supersonic aircraft engines. The air is then recombined at the back with the exhaust. So 50% of the thrust is created through the turbojet, and the other 50% is created through the ramjet, essentially making this J58 a highly efficient hybrid engine. And this brings up a critical point about the J58 being a hybrid, because turbojets are commonly limited to Mach 2, and that is because the shock wave is pushed further back into the compressor, but this also solves the problem of ram jets. These types of engines have no moving parts, but there's a drawback because you can't use these engines at a standstill, but they are very effective from Mach 2 to Mach 6. And that is why you typically do not see any new fighter jets which are coming out that have this one single engine which can propel the craft from a standstill all the way up to hypersonic speeds. So the J58 has proved that you can get beyond Mach 2 with a hybrid propulsion system and this was probably one of the most advanced engines of its time. The SR72 which is being developed right now will likely utilize a similar hybrid propulsion system. However I am very interested to see how they design the materials because there was big problems with the expansion of metals in beyond Mach 3. So another alternative to this is to actually put a pre-cooler in the front of the engine which could rapidly cool air down so that the, all the other components can work. And Reaction Engines has come up with a very unique pre-cooler design which is worth checking out. The engine is also hybrid with an air breathing mode which can go up to Mach 5 and a rocket mode for Mach 24, basically allowing the craft to go into orbit. The key to the first stage is its pre-cooler, which can cool air down over 1000 degrees in a fraction of a second, thus preventing the rest of the engine from catastrophically melting. This component alone is pretty complex, with thousands of thin walled tubes combined with cooling manifolds. Over 50 kilometers of these micro tubes are arranged in a single revolution spiral, with helium cooling the tubes at the edges. The modules are also interleaved so air passes by multiple cooling slots before making it to the end of the cooler. Ultimately, what this is doing is maximizing the cooling surface area. Once the air is cooled, it can enter into the heart of the engine, where it goes through compression, combustion, and expansion through the nozzles. This is fed into the rocket chamber, where it is ignited with liquid hydrogen. Once the aircraft hits Mach 5, the inlet cone shuts off, and the system continues on as a closed cycle rocket engine. Multiple components of the Sabre engine have already been tested, but the pre-cooler has proven that it can handle speeds much higher than any other jet engine, even running over 50% more than the SR-71 J58. It has taken over half a century just to make a considerable advancement in jet engine technology. And that's a dual testament to how advanced the J58 was at its time, along with showing how innovative some of the Sabre components are. Will the Sabre deliver? Will it be just some sort of offset demonstrator for future technology? It's hard to say, but one thing's for sure, the pre-cooler is a very important component and will likely be used in many different engines in the future. It could even lead to publicly known hypersonic aircraft, or maybe even supersonic airlines. But more importantly, I would like to know what you think. So please leave a comment, like the video if you enjoyed it, and also make sure to subscribe to my channel.